Hi there, and welcome. My name is Nam van Geloven. I'm an assistant professor in biostatistics at the LUMC. And in this video, I will give you a short introduction into our course, Basic Methods and Reasoning in Biostatistics. Every day, thousands of studies report on their new and exciting findings. We know by now, however, that only few of these findings really stand the test of time, and many study findings are later on refuted. The goal of biostatistics is to separate the true findings from all that noise. And in our course, we teach you how to draw valid conclusions from your own research data and how to critically appraise other studies. Let me shortly introduce you to our main topics. The first reason why study data may not reflect the truth is the simple fact that one study can only measure one sample. We never have the means to measure the total population about which we want to make the statement. If another researcher would perform exactly the same study as you did, but on a different sample of patients or mice or blood samples or whatever you are studying, he or she will find a different result, just due to chance alone. Now, what statistical tools like the confidence interval and the p-value do is they imagine many repetitions of your study. And then they express how much variability can be expected based on pure chance. Only after you know this background sampling variability, you can start thinking about how striking the results from your single study really are. This way of reasoning underlies all statistical tests. And in the methods part of this course, we teach you how the most common tests like the t-test and the chi-square test work, and also how to perform these tests using statistical software. The second reason why your study findings may not reflect the truth is the way in which your data came about. Unfortunately, no matter how large your sample size is, your data may still give a wrong answer if the study design has introduced bias. In the reasoning part of this course, which we cover in the lectures, we explain the different types of bias that may occur in a study using causal diagrams. Let us look at a classic example. If you would study and collect observational data on risk factors for lung cancer, then your data might suggest that having yellowed fingers increases the risk of developing lung cancer. However, if we add other known factors such as smoking to the diagram, you will see that the association between yellowed fingers and lung cancer is not a causal one. As a third factor, smoking is the actual underlying reason that has introduced this apparent relationship. You need to know the exact and the complete story behind your data in order to know what types of bias may play a role and thus also to know what kind of conclusions you can and cannot draw. Finally, not only do we need the background of your data, but also we need to know how the analysis came about. Was there only one pre-specified hypothesis or is the reported result selected from a whole bunch of analyses that were also tried but perhaps showed less promising results? This has major impact on the credibility of your findings. In this course, you will learn how you can benefit from using a statistical analysis plan and also what type of adjustments for multiple testing can be made so that you can avoid false positive conclusions. Summing up, the methods part of this course, which is offered through an e-learning, offers you the theory of basic statistical concepts and tests. In addition, it teaches you how exactly to specify and interpret these tests using statistical software. In the lectures part of the course, you will learn how the design of your data collection and also of your analysis determines what conclusions you can and what conclusions you cannot draw from your data. All this for one end goal, to make your study finding a valid one and not noise. I hope to see you soon.